Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about my perineoplastic stiff person syndrome scare. So if you have not seen my video on perineoplastic stiff person syndrome, I would highly recommend that you watch that video before watching this one because I'm not going to explain what perineoplastic stiff person syndrome is or else the video would be way too long. So please go watch that one first. That way you know what I am talking about in this video. So when I first started pursuing my diagnosis for SPS, um, I had to undergo typical testing by a neurologist, which includes a perineoplastic panel. So, you know, the neurologist, I was talking to him about my symptoms and a medication that had helped me, which was IVIG. And he sort of put the pieces together and was like, okay, this sounds like so, like this, like some of these conditions here. So he ran this panel, um, you know, because that's what he was suspicious of. So, you know, when, when doctors run blood tests, uh, they, they get a copy, you get a copy like by email or whatever. Um, and, you know, I got my copy. I think we had scheduled a follow-up for like a few months after or something um, with, with the, this neurologist, the one that was running the tests. Um, but you get the, the blood work to your email or they send it to you and, you know, you look at it and you're just like, I don't know what this is because I'm not a doctor. So I never received a phone call. Typically, if there is something urgent, the doctor will call you and they will say, look, this came up, blah, 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 whatever. I received no phone call. And I saw something on there that was something positive. But, you know, if a doctor isn't calling you, then it must not be a big deal. Right. So. I just continued, you know, researching SPS. Um, I joined some Facebook groups. I think there's only two because there's not a lot of people in on this planet that have SPS. As you know, it is a rare condition. It is one in one million, typically one in one million. If you want to know more about regular SPS, I also have a video on SPS. I think it's called like my SPS journey or something like that. Um, and I do believe I talk about this in that video. But I wanted to be more specific, you know, about this experience and why it was such a, a problem, um, what this doctor did. Um, so I continued to research SPS. I joined these Facebook groups and, you know, let them know that I was under evaluation for SPS because that's the only way that you can join the group. You have to tell them, like, either I was diagnosed or I'm under evaluation, they ran a panel, you know, that way they let you into the group. You can't just like join these groups, you know, just to go in there and, you know, and be silly, I guess. Um, and I mean, why would, why would anybody join an SPS group? You, nobody knows what SPS is, right? Um, so I, you know, I went into the group, I was like, hey, you know, I got this blood work done. And just out of curiosity, I posted what that positive thing, you know, the positive antibodies, what they were called. I wrote the name of it. And if you've watched my previous video of perineoplastic stiff person syndrome, you know that the perineoplastic version of stiff person syndrome is associated with a very specific antibody known as the anti-amphiphysin antibody. To this day, I don't know if I'm pr pronouncing it right, but that's just the way that I'm <laughs> going to pronounce it. Um, and so I posted that on there not really expecting much because a lot of times you will post stuff in Facebook groups and nobody cares. People are just like, whatever. Um, I posted it and I mean, within, you know, probably less than an hour, I had three, I think three or four responses, all from women. And one of them was a doctor. And so everyone was telling me, you need to go to the doctors. You need, you need to get a mammogram. You need to get checked. You need to get checked or screened for cancer. You need a mammogram. You need a, an ultrasound, like just like you need to go right now. And I was just like, what, <laughs> like, what did I just post on here? And like I said, one of these women, um, it is a doctor. And she said, you need to, um, get, a mammogram done and an ultrasound, you need to get your breasts and your ovaries checked for cancer because what you just posted occurs exclusively with cancer. Those antibodies mean that you've got cancer. 
And I was like, but I've had stiffness since 2006 or 2005. And this was like in 2017 or 2006. It had been at least a solid decade since the onset of my stiffness. And she was like, you need to go now, immediately. Obviously, I can't just walk into the hospital and be like, I need, you know, a mammogram. These things take time. You have to make an appointment and my a doctor has to order it. So I had already been scheduled for a follow-up with my neurologist, like I think a few months out or a few weeks out or something. And the fact that he had not contacted me kind of made me mad because I'm like, I mean, in my mind, I was like, I know I don't have cancer. I do not have cancer. There's no way that I, that I have cancer. I would be dead by now because the onset of my symptoms was over a decade ago. And if you watch my previous video, perineal plastic SPS with those specific amphiphysin antibodies, they do cause stiffness and muscle spasms, but alongside cancer. And my stiffness started back in 2005. I, there's no way I've had cancer for over 10 years and not died yet. It, it just, nothing made sense. But the fact that these, that so many women, it was like three or four were like, you, you need to get, you know, you need to get the ball rolling on this. I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just talk to my doctor. So I was able to get in to see my primary care physician and I went to her and I said, look, um, you know, and of course you, the second, I did not want to say, you know, that I was in this Facebook group. So I just said, look, I have this on my, you know, on my blood work that has showed up positive and I'm being told that it's associated with cancer. And the neurologist did not even send me a message, no phone call, absolutely nothing. I said, I should report him to the state medical board for this because that's that's just so negligent, especially because these antibodies are specific. They're just they're only associated with cancer. They're associated with SPS, but the perineal plastic version, which is exclusively exclusively occurs with cancer. And so right away, she was just like, you know what? She was like telling me to relax. She said, he's a busy man. He works at the hospital. Cause I think he also like works in the neurological department in the hospital with like stroke patients and all of that. She said, look, he's a busy guy. I'm sure, you know, it's not a mistake. He, you know, just let me get in touch with him. I swear to you, she must have gotten in touch with him that same day because he got in touch with me really fast after, after that appointment with my primary care doctor. So he immediately contacted me again and reordered the blood work and referred me to an oncologist. He said that it was likely a false positive. He said this is more than likely. He said it's a false positive. He said it's it's when he saw it, he was just like, there's no way because I had been complaining about stiffness for such a long time. Or I told him that the onset of my symptoms had been so long ago that He's like, you know, it's got to be a false positive. He said, so we'll rerun the blood work. It's going to be sent to the oncologist. So she'll give you the results. And I want you to go see her. Um, because, and then here's the other part. It's like, first it's a false positive. Then it's, they these these antibodies may show up like way before the cancer does. So I need you to go see an oncologist. It, it just, it blew my mind because first it's like, it's a false positive. You're fine. You don't have cancer, but you might get cancer later because this turned up on your blood test. So whatever. So I was like, just do it. Let's get it done. And, you know, he referred me to the oncologist. So the second one came back negative. So the second uh, blood work came back negative and the doctor, you know, the oncologist, the first time that I saw her, she's, by the way, this oncologist has, I've never seen a doctor with better reviews than this oncologist. I mean, five stars across the board. They are just like this lady knows her stuff. I mean, I have never seen such glowing reviews of any doctor. And I walk into the office and she's, you know, she gets the blood work and she's like, well, you're fine. You, you're you're negative. You're good. Everything's fine. 
And she almost said it like in a way, like a very dismissive way, like, you're fine. Like, why are you here? She had this kind of look on her face, like, I don't know why you're even here. You know, like, everything's fine. And um, I don't know if it was her that told me that these antibodies show up many, many years before the cancer does. I'm pretty sure it was the neurologist because she really <laughs> did not seem to care. Like, she was just like, I don't care. Like, you're fine. everything's fine. And she kind of gave me, sorry, my throat is like drying out. She gave me this blank stare and it felt almost like, why are you here? You know, I felt so, um, I felt like I was an intruder because obviously she's an oncologist. She deals with cancer patients every day. She's a hematologist oncologist, but obviously she sees cancer patients all the time. She sees people that are probably, you know, not going to live. I felt so guilty. I, I don't know why. I think just the look on her face made me feel so bad that I was just like, how is this, how does this woman have five star reviews? And so, you know, and I also felt bad because she was telling me you're fine. Nothing's wrong with you. And it's like, I was still in the process of getting diagnosed with SPS so that I could get the IVIG because I know that IVIG helps my muscle stiffness. I, it was just such a bad feeling. And I remember just feeling just so defeated and so tired and just so annoyed by her response. Um, but anyways, I still had to follow up with my neurologist because I think we still had that appointment. You know, I think he had just spoken to me on the phone and reordered that blood work. I was still set to see him later on. But he sent me to an oncologist like right away. So I think once I saw him, um, you know, I didn't say anything. I didn't tell him like I was about to report you to the state medical board or anything like that. I didn't say any of that. I just said, you know, uh, we, we continued on our journey to get me, you know, closer to the IVIG and to this SPS diagnosis. But I do remember, I think he was the one that said, you, you're going to have to see the oncologist every single year because when I saw her I remember her just being like I don't like I don't know why you're here like she didn't say that but she was just like you know your test is negative like I don't I don't know what you want so I think he was the one that told me you're gonna be seeing her once a year every year like forever because these antibodies again I have no idea it's like is it a false positive or not but he said these antibodies can show up long before the cancer does. So you're going to have to get screened for cancer once a year and she's going to be the one to do it. And I was like, that sucks because I did not like her at all. <laughs> she, did, she, she didn't even look like she wanted me to be there in the first place. And now I have to see her every single year. Like, you've got to be kidding me. So I was like, whatever. That was back in... I, I don't know if that was 2018 or 2017 because I didn't get diagnosed with SPS until late 2018. And that was after like seeing, going to two different universities and just all, all of this nonsense. So I was like, whatever, I, I'll do what I have to do. If it's, it's just blood work, you know, I just have to do a tumor panel every single year. I actually just got the results from that tumor panel this year. I see that oncologist next week, um, actually this week because it's Sunday. But I was just dreading it. I was like, I don't want to see this lady again. Like she was just, she did not want, she did not want to see my face. So I was like, whatever, I have one year. So the next year did the blood work again. Um, by that time I was on IVIG. I believe I was already on IVIG and I had gained weight and things were better. And she was so much nicer <laughs> so much nicer and I never complained about her I never complained about her in the first place because I was like I don't care I'm gonna see her once a year she was so nice and so kind and she really was starting to take things seriously so I don't know if the neurologist spoke to her or my primary care doctor because my primary care doctor is gone the one that that was involved in all of this she's gone she retired a few years later but when I saw the oncologist, she was just so much nicer. And she said, look, you know, 
she she does a breast exam every single year and I'm happy that it's a lady, you know, it's a woman. So she does a breast exam, you know, when they feel your breast for lumps and she says, you've got, I mean, I'm going to get TMI here. So if you guys are uncomfortable with this, you know, then you can turn it off right now. But she said, you've got very lumpy breast tissue. I'm going to need you to, to have a mammogram. And so she ordered a mammogram and that's when I had my first mammogram. I think that was probably 2019 maybe 2019 because the pandemic started the next year. I had already had two by the time the pandemic started. So I'm actually, I did have one that first year. I actually went and had an ultrasound because my regular, my primary care doctor sent me to get the ultrasound because I told her what happened. And then I think afterwards they ordered a mammogram. I don't know. I don't remember, but I know I've had two <laughs> and I was supposed to have a third one and I didn't want to do it. But the, this oncologist has been very on top of it very nice. I am very happy with her. And she just orders tests, orders tests, orders tests. We skipped, I think last year, we skipped one year and then I skipped last year because I was like, I don't want, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but she's like, you know, because of your breast tissue, because of that, those results, because you suffer with autoimmune illness, you're at an increased risk of developing cancers, and this is just what we have to do. So I will be seeing her again this uh, in a few days, and um, I am very happy with her. I'm not going to lie. She's actually really, really great. She was so... I, I don't know what was going on with her on that first appointment, because she has been so much better, uh, shows a lot more concern, a lot more care much more sympathetic. So I have a feeling someone told her, uh, the neurologist may have said, look, these are rare conditions. Um, I, I don't want us to risk it. And let's just keep an eye on her every year. And she's and the, the crazy thing is that she, this, the blood requisition form, the appointment was sent to me like six months ago. Her own office is staying on top of it. Even my neurologist doesn't care. I haven't seen him in like over a year and he has not even reached out to me, nothing. The oncologist, they have it set up every single year, every single year. And they themselves will send me the blood work, send me my appointment. And they say, you're due for your annual checkup with, with the oncologist. So I have, um, I have a lot of respect for her, even though I, I don't want to do, I don't want to do a mammogram anymore. I, she wants one every single year and I'm not even 40 yet. Your mammograms typically believe, be, typically start at 40 and I started like at 30, what was it? 36. And I already had two. I'm 30. No, actually, I think I probably started at 35. I time, <laughs> time is like not a thing for me. I have no idea the timeline of all of this. Um, and so I may have to just keep getting mammograms every single year because of my increased risk. Now, what are my thoughts? My final thoughts on all of this when I saw, you know, when I had that positive test result and to this day, I look back and I think to myself, what are the odds? What are the odds of testing positive, testing positive for regular non-perineal plastic SPS is one in a million. And I didn't test positive for the GAD65 antibodies. You know, I was diagnosed based on having an autoimmune, you know, uh, a positive ANA and having symptoms and my response to treatment. I didn't have a positive GAD65, but I had one positive amphiphysin test. Granted, I don't have cancer, but I just can't get over the fact that I had that positive test, which is super duper duper rare, and I do have muscle stiffness. What are the odds of that happening? And what are the odds of that happening without cancer? I do know um, that it has happened or that it has occurred where someone does test positive for amphiphysin, um, and they do have symptoms, but they don't have cancer. I believe I did read a case like that. You know, I started investigating when I had that positive blood test and I think there was, there is, it has happened and it's just like super duper, 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 duper rare because Nine times out of 10, 99.9% .9 of the time, if you have the amphiphysin antibodies, you have cancer. It's 100%.
but I, I do recall reading or, or seeing some, another person in a forum say that they did come back positive for those antibodies, but they didn't have cancer and that they got tested again and they did keep coming back positive for those antibodies, but they did not have cancer. But again, I did get retested and I didn't, you know, and the second time I was negative. So I just, I don't know. There's just something about it that just stays, you know, it's, it's living rent free in my head. I just cannot get over the fact that I had that one positive amplifizing test and I have muscle stiffness. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's like, what are the odds? One in a billion maybe. But anyways, I just wanted to tell you guys that story because it was a wild, it was a wild time. Let me tell you, Facebook groups, you know, the first thing you want to do is just not believe anything they say because it's Facebook. But that was one time, one time that Facebook groups really came through for me. And, um, and you know, my, my oncologist is really great. Um, I have to say many years after I've seen her at least like three times, maybe more. And she has been good. She has been really good. So I, I now understand why she has five stars. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me. Um, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Take care.